Does anyone here think it's going to be easy? No. Are our opponents going to just lay down their opposition? No. A lot of Americans don't know this, but uh, Washingtonians, taxpaying Americans who live in our nation's capital, do not have voting representation in Congress, neither the House nor the Senate. You know, I think it's a, a classic catch-22. Yeah. In order to get power in the Congress, Washingtonians need power in the Congress, right? Because the Congress is the body that needs to act. In the early years, when this mistake really is what it was, the Continental Congress decided to create a capital. Uh, they did not make any decisions about the capital. In the early years, very few people lived here. And then uh, around the Civil War, the population of Washington, D.C., increased significantly, but it increased with former slaves. And so for over a um, hundred years, the primary obstacle to voting representation in Congress was uh, segregation and racism. Uh, and now in the post-civil rights era, we are really dealing with party politics. And so you've got a group of people in the Republican Party who see this as a democratic bastion. Uh, and believe that giving voting representation to uh, Washingtonians means more Democrats, and they're opposed to it. We are the only democracy on the planet that denies voting representation in the national legislature. It wasn't until 1964, actually, that Washingtonians could vote for president. Uh, so it's really quite incredible. The United States of America has never suggested to any country that's adopting a new constitution, think of Afghanistan, think of Iraq, that you know what? You should deny voting representation in the national legislature to the citizens of Baghdad or the citizens of Kabul. Whenever I make this point, people laugh because, because it is laughable and it's also shameful. You know, Wyoming has less people in its state than the city of Washington, D.C. But Wyoming, as everyone knows, has two senators and a House member who has a vote. And there are six other states that are in population very similar to the size of Washington, D.C. It's like Vermont and Rhode Island and uh, Delaware and South Dakota and North Dakota and Montana. Uh, these are all states with relatively small populations. Uh, and uh, God bless them. They deserve representation. People who live in those states deserve two senators and a House member. But that should be true of all taxpaying Americans, including uh, uh, taxpaying Americans in Washington, D.C. Most Americans assume, we know this from a poll, that Washingtonians have voting representation. People who then oppose us believe that the Constitution forbids uh, voting representation. Actually, the Constitution is silent on this question because the founding fathers believed that a future congress would take care of this issue and actually they thought that philadelphia would host the, the capital and so you know if people lived in philadelphia they would vote through pennsylvania for uh, their representatives and their senators a constitutional amendment was tried and certainly that would be uh, the most finite way to deal with this problem to say okay let's amend the constitution and in 1978, that's what the Congress of the United States did. Only 16 states ratified it. I think there were uh, lots of uh, states that really were, weren't either interested in this or didn't really know about it. The people of Washington, D.C. certainly didn't have the resources to mount a 50-state campaign. Over the past few years, we've been supporting something called the D.C. House Voting Rights Act. Uh, provides Washingtonians with a vote in the House of Representatives. We have a majority of support in the Congress. We do. And so minority of senators are preventing us from enacting this bill. Uh, opponents of legislation in the Senate have multiple opportunities to oppose the bill. The first opportunity is to, is to refuse to even consider it, which I think in our democracy really is unconscionable. That kind of stalling tactic against the Voting Rights Act uh, has not occurred since the days of segregation. Absolutely, Washingtonians should have full voting representation in the House and the Senate and should have full local control over their budget and their laws. I mean, this is you know, as plain as day. 
But 2008, none of those things are true. We're trying to achieve victory a step at a time because every other approach has been tried and has failed. This bill only affects the House. The Senate, we, we need representation in the Senate. But let's take that up separately. And obviously, we're going to need a bipartisan approach to the Senate. That you would bless us and keep us safe and continue to anoint those who work diligently in D.C. votes to allow the District of Columbia to have a vote in Congress. You might give them the power to run on to see what the end is going to be. But we glorify your name and all of God's children in this place say, Amen. Please join me in welcoming the Howard University ROTC Air Force for the presentation of the colors. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light where so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched we're so gallantly streaming That our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the Washingtonians served this country in the armed forces. They have died to promote democracy abroad, especially in Iraq and Afghanistan, while not enjoying democracy at home.